Welcome to Grow and Give, a modern victory garden project from Colorado State University Extension. We're here to help you learn to grow food for yourself or to share with your family, your friends, your neighbors, and your community. Sweet corn. Before planting sweet corn, it's helpful to know the types of corn available to you. Normal sugar corn, the ones that are the classic heirlooms, have the taste of summer that everybody is looking for. They're easy to grow, but unfortunately the sugar is not long lived in that type of corn. It's only there for about a day or two. More improved hybrids of corn, such as sugar enhanced, have a little bit sweeter content to it and a slightly slower sugar loss. So the, the sugar doesn't disappear within a day or two, rather it's there for about a week. Isolation from other types of corn is helpful when growing this. The super sweet corns, the one that have that cotton candy sweetness to them, have high levels of sugar and these sugars are really stable on that cob. They can be stable for even up to 12 days after harvest. Isolation when growing these, the super sweets, is required in order to get that delicious flavor and the benefit of the sugar stability. What we mean by isolation and growing is that corn, which is planted in blocks, needs to be separated from any other type of corn by distance or time. The distance required is separation from other types of corn by 300 to 500 feet. This is because this is a crop that is wind pollinated. Or you can separate by time. If you wanna grow a couple of different types of corn in your garden, then make sure that their days to maturity or the days to harvest have at least two weeks, 14 days difference so that they won't be in tassel and won't be pollinating at the same time. Planting and growing sweet corn is a combination of the right amount of water, the right amount of fertilizer, and the right amount of spacing. Once you've decided what type of corn you want to plant, it's all about warm summer days. This is a warm season crop that needs wonderful frost-free days where temperatures are consistently above about 65 degrees. Soil temperature comes into play with germination as well. The soil temperature needs to be above 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit at eight o'clock in the morning consistently. Some varieties of corn, the temperature has to be above 60 degrees for um, the seeds to germinate. Plant two corn seeds in each hole, spacing the holes about 12 to 15 inches apart. In a backyard garden, we can tweak the space in between the plants a little bit, but if you're choosing to bring them in a little bit closer, understand that the rows themselves will have to be adjusted outward. As a wind pollinated crop, there has to be enough room in the block of corn for the wind to circulate and the pollen to move freely. So if you're going to crowd your plants in and plant them at nine inches apart, the rows themselves have to be 36 inches apart. If you're gonna give about 12 inches between your plants, the rows can come in a little bit and be only 30 inches apart. If you're having good success with both seeds germinating in one of your planting holes, but there've been some skips in some other areas, you can gently tease out one of those corn seedlings when they're very, very young and gently transplant it into some of the empty spaces so that your block is nicely filled in. Pollination of corn is everything if we're gonna get those full delicious ears from our plants. So let's take a look at what happens with pollination. What's supposed to happen is the silks will emerge from the ears of corn first. And then at the top of the plant, the tassels emerge. They contain the pollen. The pollen is shed and the wind moves this around. The pollen then goes and lands on the strands of silk. They will absorb water from the silk 
and that pollen germinates. The pollen, when it's germinated, will actually elongate down and along the strand of silk, and it will pollinate one kernel within that cob. This is why we have so many strands of silk on one ear of corn is because each strand is responsible for only one of the kernels there. If you find that you're having problems with opening up the ears of corn and there are not a lot of good kernels in there that have become plump and delicious, the problem is poor pollination. One of the biggest causes of this is that the silks are too dry at the time of pollination. Moisture management is usually important to make sure the silks are hydrated so the pollen can move easily. The silks could be damaged by insect feeding and then they can't move the pollen or perhaps the temperatures have been too hot when the tassels with the pollen has formed. High temperatures can kill the pollen and then it won't move well at all. For successful corn, beyond just the pollination um, that happens when you've planted it in a block, planning for good fertilization for corn is essential. Corn is a heavy user of nitrogen. So when you're preparing your corn bed, till in some uh, nitrogen before you plant the seeds. Once the seeds have germinated and have gotten to be about two feet tall, which is knee high, fertilize again with side dressing with nitrogen fertilizer. Then cap off the fertilization at another three to four weeks when the tassels have formed. So an easy way to remember it is fertilize at planting, at knee high, and at tassel. Make sure that water is uh, consistent through the corn bed the entire time that crop is growing. Yes, it takes some water to grow corn, so plan for that. You need to have good rapid growth of the stalks themselves, great formation of the roots, the silks need to be hydrated, and then the um, forming kernels need to be able to draw on a lot of water so that your corn is tender and sweet and delicious. If after you've sown your corn, you find that there's been really poor emergence by the seeds themselves, it could have been for a number of reasons. It could have been that when you planted your corn seeds, the temperatures in the soil were too cool. As I mentioned before, the super sweets really need temperatures in the soil that are higher than 60 degrees and um, otherwise they won't germinate. It could be that the moisture in the soil was off. Maybe your soil was too wet or too dry or a combination thereof and you had roller coaster moisture in the soil. Or it could be that the seed is old and all of these go into um, some of the germination problems that we see with corn. Another problem to watch for with growing sweet corn is lodging. This is when the plants fall over, usually because of some kind of a wind event. Let's take a look at the picture on the lower right of the slide to understand why this happens. You can see that there is a large mass of roots but then slightly above it along the stalk are another set of roots called brace roots. It's their job to elongate and then sink into the ground to act as an anchor. We don't want to disturb these. We don't want to cut them off. We don't want to make it so that when we're in there for weed control, we're also pulling those out or dislodging them because their job is to keep the plant upright. Now, sometimes it happens that we get strong wind events, and if the soil is loose, for example, say it had been um, after a really deep couple of days of soaking rain, or maybe the uh, soil was really loose and somewhat sandy and it dried out, and then the wind event happened, corn will lodge. It'll fall over. Now, in some cases, if it's only tilted, the plant could possibly correct this. It might anchor those roots in again and stand a little bit crooked, but somewhat upright. Otherwise, if you have a completely down stand of corn, this can be problematic. You might try to stand those up and tuck them back in, but those roots have been disturbed and they may not stay upright. Harvesting sweet corn is great, especially if you can get there before the raccoons. 
The raccoons can smell the sweet corn getting close to finishing before you and I even know that the corn is ripening. So pay attention to a couple of signs the plant is giving you that it's almost time to harvest. Watch the ears of corn themselves, especially the silk. The silk is going to brown and then start to dry a little. When the silk is fully browned, before it dries out, check to see if the kernels of corn inside the husk have gotten larger and they're plump with a milky juice. You take your thumbnail and you puncture a kernel or two at the tip of the ear of corn to see if this milky juice flows. If it does, then your corn is ready to harvest. How you harvest is to um, grab the stalk, uh, the corn stalk below the ear, and then grab the ear and twist downward. This should dislodge it from the stalk itself without damaging the stalk. Most uh, corn plants will give you two ears of corn, and the ones that are on the uppermost part of the corn stalk are going to mature earlier. They'll be ready a couple of days sooner than their sibling that is down lower on the corn stalk itself. So when you're going through to check for ripeness, check those upper ears first, and then in a, another day or two, go back and check for the um, ripeness of the lower ears. Make sure you cook the corn or get ready to use it somehow immediately. And if you can't, cooling it down immediately is what's going to help stabilize the sugars in the ear of corn. The standard type corn, the old fashioned types, can lose up to 50% of their sweetness within the first 12 hours after they've been harvested. So they really need to be eaten or processed by um, cooking and then either freezing or canning them right away. If you're growing the sugar enhanced or the super sweets, you have a few days to play with, but make sure that the corn is completely chilled down no matter what before you can get to it. Eat it right away or cool it off. Grow food, give locally, support your community. Contact your local CSU Extension office.